بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفمن يعلم أنما أنزل إليك من ربك الحق كمن هو أعمى إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب الذين يوفون بعهد الله ولا ينقضون الميثاق والذين يصلون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويخشون ربهم ويخافون سوء الحساب والذين صبروا ابتغاء وجه ربهم وقاموا الصلاة وأنفقوا وأنفقوا مما رزقناهم سرا وعلانية ويدرون بالحسنة السيئة أولئك لهم عقب الدار جنات عدن يدخلونها ومن صلح من نابائهم وأزواجهم وذرياتهم والملائكة يدخلون عليهم من كل باب سلام عليكم بما صبرتم فنعم عقب الدار والذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ما أمر الله به ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك أولئك لهم اللعنة ولهم سوء الدار الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر وترحوا بالحياة الدنيا وما الحياة الدنيا في الآخرة إلا متاع ويقول الذين كفروا لولا أنزل عليه آية من ربي قل إن الله يضل من يشاء ويهدي إليه من أناب الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوب بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات طوبى لهم وحسن مآب كذلك أرسلناك في أمة قد خلت من قبلها أمم لتتنو عليهم الذي أوحينا إليك لتتنو عليهم الذي أوحينا إليك وهم يكفرون بالرحمن قل هو ربي لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وإليه متاب ولو أن قرآنا سيرت به الجبال أو قطعت به الأرض أو كلم به الموتى بل لله الأمر جميعا أفلم ييأس الذين آمنوا أن لو يشاء الله لهدى الناس جميعا ولا يزال الذين كفروا تصيب بما صنعوا قارعة أو تحل قريبا من دارهم حتى يأتي وعد الله إن الله لا يخلف الميعاد صدق الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له 
ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة بالنار ما بعد مدير brothers and sisters our topic heart skillers the things that kill the heart and as you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants our hearts and he looks to our hearts Allah does not look to your complexion or your bodies but he looks to your hearts and your actions <coughs> so the heart is the most important thing in your in this body it's the king as Abu Hurairah of the Quran called it it's the king we know that in this heart stops beating, that's the end of your life. And that's not the only function of the heart. The Iman resides in the heart. The heart has other functions to do, which we don't know. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلَ أَصَابٍ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فَالصُّدُورِ Not the eyes that become blind, but the hearts that reside in the chests. Are you following? Allah who created the hearts, He tells us that the heart becomes blind. It's not the eye that becomes blind, it is the heart. And when the heart is blind, then you don't see. Summun bukmun umyun. Deaf, dumb, blind. What blindness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about here? They see. But he's talking about the blindness of their hearts. They are deaf, they don't hear the truth. They are blind, they don't see the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the mushriks and the kuffar and said there is ran. The ran is very fine film that covers the heart. So because of their kufr, because of their disbelief, this ran, this film, this thin membrane is formed and sealed their hearts. So nothing penetrates, nothing goes in. Are you following? So their hearts are sealed. And you know the hadith of the Prophet when he said, if someone leaves Friday prayer, three consecutive Friday prayers, Allah seals his heart. Allah seals his heart. So the heart, my dear brothers and sisters, is the most important thing in your body. And we need to work hard. <coughs> to reform our hearts and to take care of our hearts. So everyone should keep always checking his heart or her heart. How's your heart? Is it soft? Do you cry? When you read, hear such beautiful recitation, does the heart vibrate? Do the words of Allah 
Reach it. Does it tremble? إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ The true mu'mineen, the true believers, are those when Allah's ayat, when the verses of Allah are read and recited, their hearts tremble, their hearts shake. The living hearts will shake. The dead ones know. So everyone knows his heart. And should work hard to revive this heart, to cleanse it, to bring it into, into life by the grace of Allah. To remove all the dead spots, the end. Because every sin you commit, black spot is placed in your heart. You say haram, black spot. You listen to the haram, black spot. Till this heart becomes so black. So dark. And you feel this darkness within you. You feel it. Your heart becomes as hard as a rock. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لا رأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله. Had we sent this Quran upon a mountain, you would have found that mountain. Crumbling, the mount will crumble. How about our hearts? We don't feel anything. That means what? That our hearts are harder than the mountains. Are you following? Harder than the mountains. Harder than the rocks. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu When he leaves the salah They could only hear the crying They could only hear him weeping like a child Sobbing <laughs> That's what they could hear only, nothing They don't hear the recitation They don't hear the recitation Because the hearts are soft. The hearts are clean. The hearts are pure. May Allah purify my heart and your hearts. Amen. So we need, my dear brothers and sisters, to work hard on our hearts. We should ask each other, how's your heart, brother? How's your Iman? Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah he mentioned in his books and I recommend and I love the works of Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah and I recommend every brother and sister to read his books so there he mentioned especially in his book Al-Fawaid the ranks of Ubudiyya. The Ubudiyya means the servitude, being a slave for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said the Ubudiyya, <coughs> servitude, has 25 levels, ranks. And you have to achieve all of them. 25. 
These 25 levels of Arbudiya, because there are five rulings in the Sharia, how we get at that figure, because there are five rulings in the Sharia, right? What are the rulings in the Sharia? Five rulings. What are they? Haram, Makru, Far, Sunnah, Halal. How many? Five rulings. How many senses do we have? Five senses. Right? Seeing, the sight, the hearing, the tasting, the touching, the smelling. So, five times five, twenty-five. Right? Is it clear now? What does this mean? This means that you have to apply all the five rulings to each one of your senses. To each one of your senses. For example, if we take the sight, there is haram look. True or not? And you know it, right? You know the haram look, right? Do you know? You don't know? Of course you know. Watching the haram is that is haram look. Seeing women, seeing movies, seeing all that stuff. So that's haram. There is makru. Another type of look is makru. You should not do. What is it? This type of look is that which brings sadness to your heart. For example, <coughs> next door is a showroom of cars BMW, Rolls Royce, hmm? Mercedes. Huh? And you can hardly afford buying any car. So what's the benefit of going there and keep watching? Would that make you feel happy? Tell me. No. So you just feel sad. That will bring sadness to your heart. What's the benefit to go and see the another showroom selling all the most expensive furniture when you are sleeping on the carpet. Is there any benefit? Are you following me? Mm. You are married and mashallah, alhamdulillah, you are satisfied. You are satisfied, mashallah, you are married. But you are still, you are looking at women. And there are more women more beautiful than your wife, right? True or not? True. What that will bring to your heart? Sadness. Because hmm? you go home, you look at your wife, and then... Hmm. Oh, me. You feel pity for yourself, right? Because now you are comparing your wife to... Those women you saw. Are you following? So, this type of look, that will, you are not in need of it, and it will bring sadness to you. Avoid it. Or you go and you visit a friend of yours with your wife, and mashallah, they are well off. Don't look at their furniture, don't look at the chandeliers, don't look at. Why should you? Because these things will make you feel bad and sad. Just go, salam alaikum. You don't look around and you will leave and you are fine. But if you are looking all over and women they do that, they scan everything. Mm -hmm. Then you come out did you see that? Did you see that? No, I didn't. <laughs> They're very observant, mashallah. So the second type of look is the makru. Then we have fard look, you have to see. Fard. Obligatory, you have to see. 
have to look to the Book of Allah. You look to the Quran. You have to look to your wife to be. You have to see your wife to be and husband to be, right? You have to. That is your right and her right. The Prophet ﷺ, he told the companion when he proposed to a woman from the Ansar, he said, did you see her? He said, no. He said, go. The Ansar, they have problems with their eyes. So go. So you have to see in the presence of the mahram, presence of the family. And subhanallah, this is what Islam teaches us. And there are two extremes among the Muslims, two extremes. One view in some Muslim countries, you don't see your wife to be. You know that? You don't see her. Only in the night of the wedding. It is a black box, sealed. What is inside, you don't know. They only allow your mother to see her. So you are at the mercy of your mother. Are you following? This is one extreme. The other extreme, the other extreme, you go with her. Dining, you come late at night, and the family, they don't mind. Because they are fiancé. Two extremes. They are engaged. Islam told us now. Strike the balance. Are you following? <coughs> so this is far the look where you have to see. Then we have the sunnah or something recommended and that is to see and watch Allah's creation. Look to the stars and reflect upon the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is recommended because this makes you glorify Allah. You look to the stars at night if you're on the countryside, you say, what? SubhanAllah. You go to the countryside and you see the flowers and the birds and you say, SubhanAllah. You see the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So this type of look is recommended. And then we have the halal. Which is normal. You see your way. You mind your steps. Are you following? So now, my dear brothers and sisters, we have applied all the five rulings of the Sharia to what? <coughs> to the side. And you apply all the five rulings to your <coughs> healing. There is haram healing, like what? Backbiting, slandering, gossiping, music. This is haram. Are you following? So. If you apply all the five rulings of the Sharia to all your five senses, then you have actualized the Ubudiyah. You have actualized Ubudiyah in your life. You became a true servant of Allah. A true servant of Allah. Having said that, now we will delve and start mentioning what are the things that will kill our hearts. Number one, talking. Excessive talking. Always you are talking. What is the most dangerous <coughs> organ in the body? What is it? The tongue. The tongue. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu used to hold his tongue and he would say you are the one that is going to destroy me.
And for that reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trapped it and locked it. Two set of teeth, the upper jaw and the lower jaw, and two lips. So before you open your lips, think, think, what am I going to say? Good or bad? Are you following? Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yakul khayran aw liyasmit. Whoever believes in Allah on the last day should say something good or keep quiet. So before you open your mouth, ask yourself. <coughs> the words you have control over them before they come out. The moment they come out, finish. They are written. Two angels are waiting. Good, they wrote it. Bad, they wrote it. So that's why. We have to talk less. Allah has given you one tongue and two ears. Which means, hear more, talk less. <coughs> Are you following? Don't talk unless it is necessary. And mind yourself and think about what you are going to articulate what you are going to say. Is this clear? The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith, Man samata naja. Whoever is quiet will be saved. You'll be saved. Who's what? Quiet. quiet. And he also said, Man hafidha ma bayna lihiyay. Lihi is this the job. That means whoever keeps and protects what's between the jaws. That's the tongue. Man hafidha ma bayna lihiyay. Wa ma bayna rijlay. But whoever safeguards what is between the jaws and what is between the thighs. Dhammin tu lahu jannah. I guarantee for him the Jannah. This is authentic hadith. The Jannah is guaranteed for him, granted. If you protect what is between your jaws, if you protect your tongue, you don't indulge in backbiting and slandering all types of sins. And you protect your private part from the haram. The Jannah is yours. Are you ready to do that? <coughs> you don't talk. And you talk only when the, you have to. And when it is khay. That what you are going to say is good. If it is evil, swallow it. Keep quiet. And you protect your private parts from the haram. <coughs> and if you lower your gaze, you'll be able to protect your private part from the haram. So if you apply the five rulings to your eye, you'll be able to overcome your desire and you'll be able to protect your private part from the haram. But if you don't, you allow your sight loose, that will trigger your desire and you will fall into the haram. Are you following? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُ فُرُوجَهُمْ Tell the believing men to lower their gaze and to protect their private parts and see the relationship between the gaze and the private part. <coughs> Are you following? <coughs> so
So talking. The Prophet ﷺ in Bukhari and Muslim, he said, whoever believes in Allah on the last day should say something good or keep quiet. So talk less. And don't listen to others who are also involved in haram. Someone is backbiting or slandering. You tell them, fear Allah. If he didn't listen, doesn't listen to you, leave. Otherwise, you are like him. You are just like The second killer, laughing, the laughter. Too much laughter kills the heart. All being good. Always you are laughing, laughing, laughing. Always. Yes, we laugh sometimes. We have fun talk sometimes. The Sahaba, Abu Hurairah, he would laugh till he would faint. Yeah, but that was not the norm. That was not the norm. But always, they're laughing or cracking jokes. Some people, they are like that. And they lie to make the people what? Laugh. They crack the jokes so to, the people will laugh. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Wailullah, Wailullah, Wailullah. Man yakthib liyudhik al nas. Woe to him, woe to him, woe to him, the one who lies to make the people laugh. <coughs> so, the laughter. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in Tirmidhi and Sir Musnad Ahmad and authenticated by Sheikh Albani in his series of authentic hadith, hadith number 913, he said, do not laugh too much. Much of laughter kills the heart. It kills it. This is what the Prophet said. Much of laughter kills the heart. And Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah, he saw a man laughing. He said, Oh, have you received your book with your right hand? Have you received your book with your right hand already? So that's why you're laughing. Don't you know what is ahead? So Islam, my dear brothers and sisters, is about moderation in everything. In everything. <coughs> we have to be balanced. We have to be balanced. The Prophet ﷺ, he would smile. The Sahaba would be loving and he would be smiling. Okay? <coughs> the third killer is watching the haram, which is unlawful looking. So watching the haram, because by the way, brothers and sisters, all of the five senses, they lead to the, the heart. What you see goes to your heart. What you hear, the heart. What you eat, your heart. You eat haram, what happens to your heart? becomes hard. You want your heart, heart to be soft, eat what? Haram or halal? Halal. If you are eating haram, your heart will be hard. You want Allah to accept your dua, eat halal. Atul mat'amak tukul mustajab al-da'wa. Eat halal, then your da'wah will be accepted. Your supplications will be accepted. You are eating haram, everything will be rejected. The man who raised his hands towards Allah, and his clothes are haram, his food is haram, and he's saying, Oh Allah, Allah. Allah will not respond to his du'a. You want Allah to accept your du'a? Ask yourself, am I eating halal? Am I feeding my family halal? Because you are responsible. So all these things, they affect your heart. 
That's why you need to, first of all, actualize the ubudiyah. Are you following? That means we safeguard all the five senses against the haram. We don't use these five senses except for Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them for. Another killer. Healing the haram. Allah says, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمِ مِنَ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُمْ مَسْئُولًا And pursue not that of which you have no knowledge. But every act of hearing or of seeing or of feeling in the heart will be inquired into in the day of resurrection, the day of reckoning. This is Surah Al-Isra, Surah 17, Ayah 36. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَمْ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Do not pursue that which you have no knowledge of. All these faculties, they will be questioned on the day of reckoning, on the day of resurrection. Another killer. So you don't hear to the haram. Backbiting, slandering, music. Music. This is now a problem. People are saying music is halal, right? Have you heard that? Oh, yes. And they are advocating that. And if you ask this brother who is saying music is halal, and you tell him, brother, do you want that you die while singing? What will he say? A'udhu hmm? billah. He doesn't want, want to die singing. He doesn't want to die on the stage holding his guitar. He doesn't want that. Right? Yeah. You can see in the YouTube a Muslim singer, an Arab singer from Saudi Arabia. He died on the stage with the guitar. You want to die like that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi he told us that before you go to sleep, you say you say your adhkar and then you finish with Kulya'iha al kafirun Some Muslims they sleep with music, you know that? In the bed. They call it classic, <laughs> romantic, <laughs> hmm? romantic music. You want to die with the music? Prophet Sallallahu said that we die every night, right? Bismakallahumma amutu wa ahya. Oh Allah, I die in your name. And they get up also in your name. Every night the souls they go to? To Allah. Some souls they come back, some souls they don't. That means, maybe your soul will not come back. Do you want this soul, the last thing the soul heard? The music? It is your choice. Are you following? In the morning you get up, Allah send the, send the soul, soul back. Alhamdulillahi, Allah di ahiyana, ba'adama, al-matana, fayli mishur. Our praise is due to Allah, due to Allah, who gave us life after we were dead. We were dead. So the music kills the heart. It kills the heart. And it is haram. And you, ne you don't know what the it does to your chemistry. Just put the music and see. What's it? What happens to your body? It resonates, right? Shaitan now is getting in. 
and the chemistry is reacted. Everything is triggered. And the music is the avenue to Zina. It paves the way for the Zina. And all the music, what is it around? Revolves around what? You know. All music. Most of it. Maybe old ones a little bit decent. Decent relatively, yeah? But today, no way. So, that kills the heart. <coughs> so, music kills the heart. And that's exactly what the Prophet said 1400 years ago that my Ummah will legalize it, legitimize it, make it halal. They will make it halal. It is halal. يستحلون الحرى والحرير والخمر مع حديث الزن بخاري and it's not معلق but some brothers they pretend to be mashallah طالب علم tough compound ignorance and they just say Ibn Hazm said this so they are blind followers of Ibn Hazm they don't see what the experts of hadith say what half of them Ibn Hajar say and the scholars of hadith say, and the fuqaha say, hadith is authentic. That they will make what is haram, halal. Yistahilluna, al-hira. Zina becomes halal, and we are seeing it. Prostitutes are giving permits. So she tells you, I'm fine, I've been checked. No HIV. Al hmm? Hira. Zina becomes halal. Well harir, silk. Natural silk. is haram for men. Well khamr, the liquor everywhere. In Muslim countries. Muslim country. Khamr. And ma'azif, musical instruments. This 1400 years ago, the Prophet ﷺ said it. And there are many, many ahadith. Shaykh Albani, rahimahullah, he wrote a book like this, refuting all those dahis, Ibn Hazm, and those who followed his footsteps. That book needs to be translated. تحريم على اللهو والطعب prohibition of the musical instruments also among the killers of the heart fantasizing fantasy some people they fantasize they are living not here another world they are living in fantasy They are imagining and that's it. I told you, I mentioned this in some of my talks, that a brother told me, he was, you know, he didn't have any job. So during the day, most of the time, he's sleeping. At night, it is hard for him to sleep. So he found a way how to put himself to sleep. And that is why hmm, fantasizing. He said, I would imagine myself project manager. Okay? And I'm running this project and I'm doing this and until I go to sleep. And of course, in the morning, I am bankrupt. Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, This water. <coughs> If I imagine it khamr, it becomes haram. Though it is water. But if I imagine it khamr, it becomes haram. I commit a sin. 
Some people, when they fulfill their biological needs, because they are children here, they are imagining somebody else. That is also a sin. That is also a sin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you know by this heart and by your intention, you can reach the Firdaus or you can reach the bottom of hellfire. The Prophet in hadith agreed upon in Bukhari and Muslim, he said, a man is very poor, he saw a rich man spending visa billah, so he said, I wish. I could do like you. I wish I could do like you, that I can uh, build masjids, I can uh, help the poor, I can do this and that. You know what the Prophet said? He said, Fahuma fil ajri sawa. He will get the same reward. Allahu Akbar. He will get the same reward that he built masjids and schools and orphanages and all that. Though he didn't do that. But because of his what? Niyya. His intention. And then he mentioned another one, the Prophet who saw another one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him wealth, and he is spending this wealth in the haram. And he said, I could, I wish I could, I could, I could do the same thing. But the problem, I don't have money like you. The Prophet ﷺ said, فَهُمَا فِي الْوِزْرِ سَوَى That this man will receive the same punishment. Though he didn't drink alcohol, though he didn't commit zina, but that's what he intended. Are you following? The Prophet ﷺ when he said, إِذَا الْتَقَى الْمُسْلِمَانِ بِسَيْفَيْهِمَا فَالْقَاتِلُ وَالْمَقْتُولُ فِي النَّارِ when two Muslims meet, fighting each other, both the killer and the one who is killed are in the hellfire. <coughs> the Sahaba said, we can understand. The killer, okay, he's a murderer. But how about the one who was killed? Why should he go to the hellfire? The Prophet ﷺ said, كَانَ حَرِيصًا عَلَى قَتْلِ أَخِيهِ Because he was so eager to kill his brother. But he did not get the chance. Had he got the chance, he would have killed his brother. So both of them, they go to hell. So don't cheat yourself and think that only because I'm fantasizing, I will not be held accountable before Allah. So it is a sin. Are you following? That is another killer. The killer to follow, and we just mentioned the music. The music. Imam Malik said, لا يستمع إلى الغناء إلا الفسقة. Only the sinners and the wicked ones, the immoral ones, are the ones who will listen to music. Not the righteous, not the pious, not those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you can listen to your wife singing to you, right? <coughs> Alhamdulillah. You want someone to sing? Okay. If your wife sings for you, that is halal, no problem. Not only she can sing, and she can dance for you as well. Of course. Yes, this is life. Why not? Don't you know that the Huriyat, they sing? Huh? For the husband in the Jannah? The Huriya will be singing for you in the Jannah. But to go and listen to a woman on the stage singing? No. That's different. Also among the killers, eating kills the heart. Excessive eating. If you eat a lot, that will kill your heart. Imam Ahmad said, you eat a lot, you miss a lot, you sleep a lot. 
You sleep a lot, you miss a lot. Which is true, very true, true or not? If you get have heavy meal at night, how do you find it to get up in the morning? Difficult. And what else? You see nightmares, right? Yeah? Nightmares. Because you had heavy meal. And then you want the Sheikh to explain to you your dream, huh? <laughs> so, so excessive eating kills. You know that our Prophet used to eat only with these three fingers? Huh? Like this. Not much. But we, mashallah. <laughs> but Nukayim said he used the five and he pushed it with the palm. <coughs> hmm? The Prophet only with three fingers. My Sheikh, Hafizahullah, Sheikh Mahmoud Atiyah, is always only eating with three fingers. And when we ask him, Sheikh, how do you find it? He said, yeah, it's okay. Normal. I got used to it. <coughs> so when you eat a lot, you feel lazy, sleepy, and you know it. For instance, if we are attending a course on the weekend, and you eat a lot, do you concentrate after lunch? Dozing. Because hmm? all the blood goes to the stomach. Nothing goes to the brain. That's why organizers of courses should give only something light. Huh? Also among the killers, mingling with people. Always you are with the people, mingling with them. That also will kill your heart. Especially the dais, those who are in the da'wah. You should have time to be with yourself. To reflect and ponder and ask yourself and question yourself. But if you are always talk here, one talk, one talk, one talk, all that day talk, talk, talk. You go home only, you sleep. This is very dangerous. You should have time for yourself where you question yourself. You know Sayyidina Umar every night he would be hitting his leg with the whip, telling his leg, tell me where did you go today? Where did you go today? This is what they call muhasaba, self-inventory, questioning yourself. You sit by yourself, what did I do today? The good things you praise Allah, you say Alhamdulillah. Bad things you make a still far. But if you don't have time for your nafs, for yourself, oh my God, you'll be doomed, you'll be ruined. And especially when you are, people are mashallah, mashallah, and they are praising you, and your head will grow like this, and you will think that you are Shaykh al-Islam. <laughs> The da'is, they have to come to, down to earth and question themselves and ask themselves. Not that they become pop star, celebrities. This is a sickness. This is a disease. This is fitna for you. Fitna. Come down to earth. And don't believe what the people say. You know yourself. So have time for, your, for yourself, question yourself, <coughs> and ask Allah forgiveness. Are you following? So this is another killer when you mix with the people. Always, you don't have time. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak rahimahullah. The moment he finishes, he would finish his salah, he would leave the masjid immediately. He would not wait. He would not wait. <coughs> he prayed, he would go to his house. So they asked him, don't you feel alone? Don't you feel alone? He said, how can I feel alone when I am with the Prophet and his companions? 
What did he mean? I am reading the hadith of the Prophet and his companions. So how can I feel alone? This is Ibn al-Mubarak who one year will go to Hajj and the next one he will be on the front lines on the frontiers on the Kihab Ibn al-Mubarak So one day there was a parade for Harun al-Rashid Harun al-Rashid and the mother of Harun al-Rashid was watching and then Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak came, passed by, and all the people, they left the parade and they followed Abdullah ibn Mubarak. The mother is watching. He said, who's that? That the people, they left Harun al-Rashid's parade and they followed. They said, that, that is Abdullah ibn Mubarak, the scholar of Khurasan. He said, this is the real kingdom. This is the real kingdom. So you need to have time for yourself when you reflect. You need to have time to build your knowledge. Otherwise, you will be just repeating yourself. You know that. And the people will say, he doesn't have anything. Hmm? He's just repeating himself. We heard it, we heard that many times, nothing new, because you became stagnant, <coughs> because you don't have time to build yourself. Don't you know the knowledge is an ocean? And every day you discover your ignorance, every day. Every day you discover that you know nothing, every day. Sayyidina Ali said, the moment you say, I know, you become ignorant. And that's why. You seek the knowledge from the cradle till the grave. Some of the scholars of hadith, before they breathed their last, they were dying. And you heard the hadith, and he told them, give me a pen and paper, I want to write it. You are dying, he said, maybe this hadith will benefit me. That is the ilm, continuous process, ongoing process. So the students of knowledge always should have time for himself. And he should organize himself. Time for the family, time for the knowledge, time for the study circles, for people's problems. And the people, they have to understand that when this sheikh or this student of knowledge, he doesn't pick the phone, because he doesn't have time. Our Sheikh Al-Bani, rahimahullah, people, they come, they knock, they ring. And they hear him from inside, telling him, go back. There's no time. I don't have time. Imagine that he, rece he, he, he received everyone. Would he be able to check all the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ for the Ummah? And sifting all the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and the books of the Sunan and the Sahih and Masani for the Ummah? No. So you have to keep in this in mind that the students of knowledge or the Shaykh or the Alim has no time. So if he has allocated this time, that's it. That's why we are told, if you ring, you ring only three rings, and then you go. You call three rings, that's it. Not you keep on holding. You think that he will. No. Put it on silent mode, that's it. <laughs> Let it ring till the next day. Because the lifetime is limited. And people should help the students of knowledge and the ulama to utilize their time. To utilize their time. Is it knowledge? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. So these are 
the killers. Some of the killers, there are many killers. And we need to avoid them. And when the heart, my dear brothers and sisters, becomes sick, I think there are brothers outside. Can you make room? There are three types of hearts, my dear brothers and sisters. Hearts are classified into three categories. Three categories. Number one, the Qalb Salim or clean heart. Healthy heart. Pure heart. This is number one. This heart which is free from malice, grudge, revenge, healthy, anything. All these ills, this heart is free of. It's free from all these types of diseases. This is Qalb Salim. And this is what Allah loves. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبِ سَلِيمٌ The day when neither wealth nor children will avail, will help. Except the one who meets Allah with Qalbin Salim. Pure, clean heart, healthy heart. Heart, white heart. The heart that her holds no grudge or malice. And this is what we should work on. Everyone should work on his heart. Don't hold anything in your heart against your brothers and sisters. Don't hold. Every night before you go to sleep, forgive everyone. And you know the hadith, the sahabi, the Prophet ﷺ said, Now a man from among the people of the Jannah, the inhabitants of Jannah, is going to enter. And said, Now Sa'ad came. And this happened three times. Three times. The same sahabi. So one of the Sahaba said, Uncle, I have a problem with my father, so I want to be your guest for three days. He said, okay, most welcome. You're most welcome. He stayed with him. He didn't see anything abnormal, <coughs> anything unique. <coughs> After three days, he said, Uncle, I have no problem with my father. But my, we heard the Prophet ﷺ say, the man from the people of the Jannah is going to enter now, and it was you three times. So what is the secret? He said, my son, whenever I go to sleep, I forgive people. So when I go to sleep, I don't hold anything in my heart. <coughs> is this clear? Yes. Are we ready to do that? Forgive. That's it. And may Allah guide them. Don't hold anything in your heart. Leave it. For the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah. So this is the first type of heart. Qalb Salim. The second type of heart. Qalbun Mayyid. Dead heart. May Allah save us from that. Amen. Dead heart. The Qalb is dead. So no mawidah, no admonition effects, no recitation effects, no piece of advice effects, nothing. It's dead. He sees the haram. No reaction. You see the munka, you see the all nudity, you see all these things. No reaction, nothing, nothing, nothing. It's dead. And if you want to check himself, is my heart dead or alive? If your heart is alive, when you see the haram, what happens to your heart? It reacts. 
They say, A'udhu Billah. Astaghfirullah. That's what the heart re reacts. It repels. I'm sure you taste, experience this. When you come from Umrah and Hajj, and the first time you land, what do you feel when you see these things? How does your heart react? You feel it, right? Your heart is rejected. But then a few minutes later, accepts everything. So you see the munkar around you, it doesn't affect you. It doesn't affect your heart. Is this clear? When you know that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever sees munkar, evil, <coughs> to change it with his hand. If he cannot, with his tongue. If he cannot, with his heart. And that is the weakest level of Iman. Weakest. That you hate it in your heart. What if you don't hate it in your heart? And what does it mean you hate it in your heart? That means the heart rejects it. Are you following? The heart rejects it. <coughs> but if the heart <coughs> accepts it, And this is my advice for my brothers, the Daris. Well, they don't mind talking to the women, mixing with the women, shaking hands with the women. And they think this is a Dari has to be up to date. Hmm? That will kill your heart. That will kill your heart. And the heart becomes Dead. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I conclude, I will conclude, inshallah. And the heart will become dead. The Prophet ﷺ said, مثل الذي يذكر الله والذي لا يذكر الله كمثل الحي والميت. The one who remembers Allah and the one who doesn't remember Allah like the dead and the living. And the third type of heart <coughs> is the sick heart. قلب مريم سقيم The sick heart which is full of lusts and desires. <coughs> that heart is sick. May Allah purify my heart and your heart. And may Allah save us from going astray. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our hearts in the truth. And may Allah bring us to the deen, ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our faults and mistakes and sins and ignorance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise all of us in the company of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ameen. And may Allah show His mercy in all of us, and may Allah reward all of you immensely for your patience and attendance.